Here we go. Let's make it a good day. Every day, every day. We do it our own way. Sing it out every day. Let's make it a good day. Every day, every day. Oh, no matter what they say. Sing it oh, every yeah, day. yeah. It's a good day. It's a good year. How about that? I mean, we're only three days in. 2022? Hey! Welcome to the Jason Show. I'm Kenna Mark. You know him. It's Tom Butler. Oh, oh, oh thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you all. <laughs> thank Please, you. hold your applause. It's so nice of you. Please. Uh, no, it's, it's good to be here. I did not know I was filling in for Jason until this morning. It was a surprise. Yes. Um, so, but it's always a good surprise because I love hanging out with Kendall. Kendall's <laughs> one of my favorite people here at the Nine. And Thanks, Tom. Ditto. You know that. Yeah. And we always have fun together. We do. And uh, Jason's having fun, too. He is. Yes. He, he's, this is his scheduled. Um, if you're just joining in and you're worried, do not be. He's, he's in fun. perfectly good hands yeah. in Disney World. Uh, he's got his two-week trip, so there will is be this me. his first trip there? To Disney yeah, World? I think so. Of the year. Of, oh, of the year. Okay. Oh, of the year. It's only <laughs> January 3rd. He was there on New Year's Eve, actually. So he's oh, been yes. there literally the that's whole year of, so far. That's a new tradition, I think, for Jason. A somewhat new tradition. Yeah. 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 So I, he's having fun. He's actually going to be joining us in uh, just a couple oh, of minutes. Right. Yeah. Because uh, we're going to be talking to him about Betty White in just a second. Yeah. But first, you and I were talking just before the show about yes. New Year's Eve. Mm -hmm. Okay. Can you explain this? this horse game to people because someone watching will know what you're talking about. I yes. have no idea. So we play with some friends. It's basically, it's like little racing horses on a board game uh -huh. and you're playing with poker chips and you have cards and you put money in and each chip, in this case, we were, I think we said it was a quarter a chip. Okay. So everyone buys $10 in chips uh -huh. and then you roll dice and your certain horse moves or is in kind of in the back of the line and it, you have to pay money on those. But if your horse moves and you win, get to the finish line, uh -huh. you get the whole, all the, all the chips that were put in the pot, you get all of those after your horse wins. Four people could have won, or in my case, in the last game, I had three of the four cards for my horse, number three horse, I think won. Did and you so cheat? So I took a bunch of chips. And, and No, I didn't. No, I don't cheat. I don't it's, cheat? It's, I don't cheat. That's lousy. It's just, it was just fun. I, yeah, I had never thought it's a Minnesota, it's a, Minnesota it's a, thing. It's a newish Minnesota thing. Uh, I've played it at another friend's house, too. But it's a blast. It's really fun. Okay, if you have heard of this game, please. I'm sure. Drop us a message on some Some of you play probably on New Year's Eve, too. Yeah, I, I had never yeah. heard of it. I'm not, I'm not a huge board game fan. Mm -hmm. You know, I like cards. We both talked yeah. about we like cards. Mm -hmm. But uh, it, it's really fun. And it's easy. It's easy. Anyone can play it. Kids can play it. You okay. can play it with the whole family. It's a, it's a blast. I like that it's just like a quarter a chip because I'm cheap. <laughs> so. It adds up, though, after a while. I mean, you know. I, I Ten whole dollars. I won 25 at the end. Not bad. Not bad. Look at this guy over Paid here. for the Uber. That's that something. is a way to go. Yeah. yeah. It was oh, fun. Nice. All right. Hey, we talked about Jason. We talked mm -hmm. about Buddy White. Yes. Now we're going to talk about the hot dish. Roll it, Leo. It smells so good. It has that new 2022 smell. I'm getting, what is it? Don't say chutney. It. I think it's chutney. Certain off I don't really know what that is. I well like with chutney it. in 2022. Hey, uh, we said this a few times now, but 2021 dealt us all a little bit of a bad blow at yeah. the very end of the year. Actress and comedian Betty White died at just 99 yeah. years old. Betty was a few weeks short of 100. We've been talking about her a ton because of that, her birthday, uh, January 17th. Her TV career spanned seven decades and included prominent roles in such classics as the Mary Tyler Moore Show and, of course, the Golden Girls. And joining us to talk about Betty, live from Disney World's Hollywood. It's a Disney dad? Is this a baby announcement? Oh, crap. The D-Y fell off. I'm sorry. I, it should say, I'm sorry. I, the felt fell off. I thought Milo Hi, Matheson guys. was Hi, joining us. Happy New Year, buddy. Hi, Hubba. How are you doing? Good, Bubba. Uh, we, we're, we're sad. We, I know you're very sad, too, also, to hear that Betty did not. She was so close to 100. So close. And that's why I decided, you know, Betty is often referred to as the first lady of television. So I thought it would be fun to come to you um, from the primetime cafe here at uh, Disney's Hollywood Studios because this is a celebration of classic uh, TV from the 50s and 60s. Actually, each booth, um, each booth has a little television 
where you can watch classic shows. So it's fantastic. Yeah. And yeah, and like over there, Alan can get a shot. There's a little classic television over there. And cool. yeah, it's just, it's fantastic. So when you think of Betty and you think of um, television, it's, it's, she's it. She's, she is the first lady of television. And there's a very small list of on Facebook. There's a, a very small list. Oh. Jason, we can't hear you. I don't know what you just did, but we can't hear you. Can you hear me now? Yes. yes. There we go. Sorry about that. There are very few actors or actresses in television history that can create one iconic character that stands the test of time. Betty did two. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Betty did Sue Ann Nivens uh, in the Mary Tyler Moore show, and of course, Rose Island in the Golden Girls. Some would argue even three with uh, more modern audiences with Hot in Cleveland. And of course, she was the game show queen in the 50s, 60s, and 70s, and that's where she met her beloved husband, the great game show host, Tommy, I know you love him. Alan, Alan Ludden, right. Yeah. Um, so there's going to be no, because it's, you know, it's Betty and our other buddy, Tommy, Larry Hagman. I mean, you know, you can roll yep. your eyes on my Dallas reference, yep. but nope. to create two characters that span the test of time, that's pretty remarkable. That, yeah. that, that constellation of stars is very small. Yes. And I think that's why, um, I think that's why networks broke in. I mean, not a lot of stars get network break-ins uh, to break into coverage to announce her death. Uh, she was pretty special, and I don't think, and I know you two will agree, I don't think we'll ever see the likes of a star mm. that spans generations like Betty White did ever again. We just won't. It, and just so beloved. No one had a crossword ever to say about Betty. And she just, as she ever. got older, people loved her even more, and new generations got to know Betty White. Yeah, I mean, and, and, the, and her work with animals and just uh, everything. And the fact that she stayed relevant. I mean, the, her, you know, NBC just repeated her episode of SNL. She connected with modern audiences um, as, as, as easily as she did fans of the Golden Girls and, and MCM. And I was thinking about this, Kendall and Tom. Isn't it quite remarkable for us here in Minnesota? And you know us, we'll, we'll, we'll claim anybody that goes to Minnesota <laughs> on a spring break trip. But think about it. Betty, um, Betty's two iconic roles both had Minnesota connections. Yep. Rose Nyland from St. Olaf. Mm -hmm. And of course, Sue Ann Nivens worked at WJM based in Minneapolis. So in a way, um, very much like Mary Tyler Moore, um, Betty's, Betty's one of us. You know, she has a great Minnesota connection, a real Minnesota connection. That's right. yeah. Well, Jason, we're glad that you could call in. Um, on a slightly lighter note, uh, I do see, we mm -hmm. do see that you are not partaking in dry January. <laughs> Kendall, how dare you? This is club soda with a lime. And? That was made, uh, Colin, get a shot. That was made uh, by our bartender. There's the legendary Julie and Elena right there. Oh, They're hey. legends. Hello. People actually asked to take more pictures with them than Winnie the Pooh. <laughs> I mean, just a little fun fact. Yeah, so just a is... soda with lime. <laughs> Yeah, just Ooh, that. It is a little different though. This isn't a club soda. I, oh gosh. I okay. gotta, I'll ask about, oh, really quick. I know we have to go, but yeah. here, Colin, walk outside. Let me show you how busy the park is. You want to see that, guys? Yes. Oh, and how warm it is. Don't we ever want to see how beautiful it is oh, in Florida? That's right. I want to rub in how warm it is. Come on. <laughs> a little bit, a little bit. Yeah, it's like negative 20. Look at here. that. Oh, oh, look at that. Oh, it's just so busy. Oh. Just so, oh. must that, be so oh. rough for you. I gotta hold on a minute. I think we I gotta, have a really bad connection. Yeah, I think we have wipe to the go. Sweat off your brow. Um, I think. <laughs> no, there's no bad connection. I hear you clear as a bell. I hear you clear as a bell. No, but even this, really quick, guys, this is usually when crowds kind of go down the day, uh, like after New Year's. This is as busy as we, we've been here since Thursday. This is as busy as we have seen it. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, a little, it's a little Disney crazy here at Hollywood Studios. I love it. From our favorite Disney daddy, yes. Jason Matheson, everybody. Who's your Disney daddy? <laughs> and hi to Colin. And happy new I year. I will. Bye, guys. Love. Happy Bye. new year. All right, buddy. Happy new year. I mean, just the, like, let me walk outside in my T-shirt. Of course. Of mm. course. So at the friend's house, we were playing this game with the yeah, horse game. the horse she game. Hit, she gets People magazine. Mm -hmm. and she just received the issue that said Betty White turns 100, mm -hmm. and it was the day she passed away. It's Kind of sad. Oh, yeah. I said, keep that though. It might be worth some money down the road. You never yeah, know. Or keep sa keepsake, certainly. In right. The yeah. um, by the way, we will be looking at some of Betty's best TV moments a little bit later in that. the show. Have to do that. Mm -hmm.
Uh, next up in the dish, it has been uh, too long since we have had a Kardashian update on the show. Oh, thanks, Tom. So excited is one Kendall Mark. Well, yes, they are back. Hulu dropped a teaser for their brand new show. Let's take a look. The Kardashians coming to Hulu. They are the reality family. I spent 20, the original, yeah, spent 20 seasons on E! Of course, keeping up with the Kardashians that uh, you, you grew up watching, essentially. Mm -hmm. uh, it's unclear, though, when the new series will officially debut, but there it is, the teaser. You're excited yes. to see the, the, the K family back together. <laughs> Yeah, I'm really, you can't even say Kardashians, I, Tom. Well, you know, <laughs> it's in my contract. Um, I love them. Yes. Uh, obviously, we're all very clear on that. I don't need your hot takes on them. It is my guilty pleasure of life, okay? That's fine. Theme. Uh, Chloe did sort of drop a hint on Ellen just a couple months ago yeah. that they were thinking it would probably be airing end of January, February. Uh -huh. So, oh, um, you mean right around sweeps? Oh, it's weird how that works. Oh. They're so smart, those Kardashians. Oh, I get it. But I know I, I really am excited. Yeah. I did grow up watching the show, and when it was over, it was sad. It was a bummer. But I don't think anyone's surprised that they just jumped to Hulu because within three months of them being like, we're wrapping up forever, they were like, so we did yeah. this new di deal with uh -huh. Disney. <laughs> yeah. And they have to, you know, they have to eat. They have I, to, no, the poor thing. You know, mm -hmm. right? Uh, it's like the Spreewell kind of contract. My yeah. family needs to eat. Yeah, I'm I'm happy that you could bring <laughs> Spreewell and the Kardashians anytime, into one anytime sandwich when somebody for us. needs money. Yes, it goes back to bring Spreewell. it back to Minnesota. Uh, but you're excited, and a and lot of people probably are. Because yes. it's a guilty pleasure. It's it fine. Is. You don't take it too seriously. You don't it's live innocent. your yeah. And don't you feel better about your family after watching that a little Tom, bit? Tom, no, I just want to be rich. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you might be missing the point of what I was asking. But I okay, I get that. I get mm -hmm. that. Yeah. I want to be your family. Your family is down to earth and fun. Now, Thanks, I'm not saying Tom. the Kardashians aren't, but they're certainly. Not your typical Minnesota type of family. <laughs> Jeff is like, stop talking about the Kardashians. We have to uh, go. We will do that because we have a lot more to come <laughs> on the big program on this first Monday of 2022. <laughs> so much. She's so excited. So excited. There's more hot dish left to eat up this Monday. Janet Jackson reveals the first footage from her upcoming documentary, and it's spilling some major tea. Plus, new TV shows begin this week, including the drama The Cleaning Lady on Fox. We're talking to two of the stars, including Oliver Hudson. And putting a cork in January. Stephanie Hansen is here talking dry January, why it's a thing, and how to mix up some mocktails for the month ahead. With, okay, if it's tequila, we're gonna be drinking De Nada tequila tonight. Dave yes, uh, and this is in honor of Betty White, a life well lived. Yeah, 99 years. 99 years. Cheers. Betty White. Cheers. Cheers. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Number one. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> Happy New Year, everybody. Happy New Year. Cheers. <laughs> Wow, that was unnecessary. Yeah, that was a lot. Oh. 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 <laughs> That's not rum chata. Uh-uh. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> That's a, that's a little strong. You know, a time-honored tradition, Anderson Cooper reacting to taking shots with Andy Cohen on New Year's Eve. Yes. How many did they take? I, well, that was three or four, right? There, <laughs> it was right? like He's 9 like, o'clock Eastern, too. Ooh. It was like, yeah, I've got like three more hours of show to do. We've all had those shots, though, where you show up to a party, and they're like, come on, have a shot. And You're then like, you, what was in that? Oh, just a little Everclear. That's why I can't talk. Uh-huh. Good morning, everybody. Ouch. Woo. That hurts. Hey, on Mondays, we get a special serving of hot dish all the way from Hollywood, and it's Brad from TMZ. Brad, uh, no morning shots for you, though, right? You've still got a long day ahead of you. <laughs> 
You know, guys, I, I thought I was over my New Year's hangover, and, and watching that video just brought it right back. <laughs> no question, Brad. Uh, hey, you've got some news on Ye. He's moving on from Kim, finally, maybe. He, he is, Kendall, and this is uh, kind of surprising. So we got photos of Kanye West. He was out in Miami over the weekend, uh, and he was at dinner, and we're told it was a date night uh, with actress Julia Fox. Now, uh, Julia is kind of a, a rising star. She was in Uncut Gems and kind of got a lot of attention with that role. Uh, but the two of them, as you can see there, they had dinner together. We're told they spent quite a bit of time there. Uh, they did speak with some friends at the restaurant as well, too. But this, uh, from what our witnesses tell us, this was very much a, uh, a date between the two of them. Yeah, well, sure. Why not? Why not? Why? She's moved on. Okay. He should move on. Not uh, exactly. Yeah. And, and and we've seen Kanye begging for Kim as recently as two weeks ago at his show. So to see him with someone else, I think, is some significant movement in his life. And didn't he just buy a house like just down the street from her too? Uh, like right next door to her. He bought a house, uh, which, of course, he'll level this house and he'll build something. But we're told he wants to be close. It's sweet. Is yeah. that sure? Cute. Yeah. 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 What it is. We'll oh. see. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, next up in the dish, uh, Halle Berry. Uh, we love Halle. She pulled a fast one, though, on her followers. So tell us, Brett, what, what did she do? What happened? And he is frozen in time. The suspense is killing Guys, me. Guys, I may have lost you. There oh, we go. You no, you're oh, here. We're talking about Halle. Did you hear us? Oh, yes, yes. now I got gotcha. you. Okay. Uh, so Halle Berry, uh, she kind of tricked some of her celebrity friends over the weekend because you see... She posted that and she said it's official. So a lot of people thought, wow, she officially married her boyfriend. That includes The Rock, Octavia Spencer, who posted her uh, congratulations messages. And then you see the reveal there. It's officially 2022, not officially oh, married. Hallie. So a uh, little prank from Hallie there. <sighs> Get to every Allie time Barry. those rich people. <laughs> I know, yeah, at, at their resort in Bora Bora, right? <laughs> oh, why in the not? beautiful <laughs> space. All right, finally, J.K. Rowling appeared on the Harry Potter reunion. Mm, <laughs> kind of, sort of. Yeah, I had a lot of people buzzing over the weekend because this was the uh, the big 20-year anniversary special for Harry Potter. They had all the major players from the cast interviewed. Uh, but there was no J.K. Rowling at least interacting with the cast, which so many other members actually did. Instead, they used old interview clips from her from 2019. Yeah. Uh, now, of course, she has been under a lot of heat because of some transphobic comments that she continues to make. So people kind of thought maybe that's what happened uh, and why she wasn't included in the new special. Uh, but there's also reports saying it was her team who turned it down uh, and said that it was not because of the transphobic comments. So uh, interesting to see kind of what really happened. I know like Daniel Radcliffe and some of the other stars have come out and said they disavow everything she has said. So there's clearly some bad blood there. Uh, but it was just odd to see her not a part of it. Mm. Yeah, interesting, interesting, interesting stuff. Brad, mm -hmm. good stuff on a Monday. Uh, Happy New Year to you again. Thanks so much. Appreciate it. You guys too. Appreciate it. Brad from TMZ. Uh, next up in the dish, Kendall, uh, speaking of Harry Potter and the big reunion, apparently HBO Max's research team isn't very thorough. No. No, somebody dropped the ball. Uh, especially uh, when they wanted to show Emma Watson as a child before becoming a star. Instead, they picked a photo of American Horror Story actress Emma Roberts. <laughs> Oh. and posted this picture on Instagram back in 2012. So at least HBO did some digging. Just, uh, oops, the wrong, the wrong actress. I'm just like, <laughs> it wasn't her, I mean, the movie was filming at the time, so don't you know what Emma Watson looked like at that age? It's Hermione, hello. I mean, everyone knows what Emma Watson looked like, especially in Harry Potter then. Yeah. I, I, there's some similarities, a little bit, right? I a little bit. Guess. Trying to get that person, because you know that person's going, oh boy, it's my last day on the job. My last Poor day. Poor schmuck. I mean, for real though, and it's not like Emma Roberts is some really small actress. People right. know who she is. Right. Um, it, so, it <laughs> yeah. Way to go. Way to go, guys. Oops. Way to go. Big oops. That was an interesting twist, though, with TMZ with the J.K. Rowling thing. Yeah. Because we'd only ever really heard that maybe she just speculated that she wasn't invited, but it sounds like maybe that wasn't the case. So I don't know. Okay.
It's fodder anyway. It is fodder for us to talk about on a market. It is fodder. It's such go. a good word. <laughs> Next in the dish, two homes in Minnesota are stars of HGTV's latest reality competition show, mm -hmm. and one of them could be declared ugliest house in America. Oh. And now an HGTV special sneak peek. I'm Retta, and I'm looking for the ugliest house in America. <laughs> and the most hideous of them all gets a $150,000 renovation from Allison Victoria. It's HGTV. If you didn't see that coming, you must be new. Uh. Oh, look it. Why? Why? <laughs> Wow. Okay. I'm stunned. If you look straight up, that's a water droplet coming down at you. You bought it like this. I did. Oh boy. <laughs> I made a lowball offer and they took it. Check out the bathroom on the left. Okay, bathroom. Shower for four. For four? No, no. No, no. I'm Nate Wright. How can you function when every surface can possibly cause an open wound? Um. <laughs> I told you know, Tom before the show started there was a Poseidon outside of a house. Yes. And he was like, like the, the mythical creature. <laughs> <laughs> In yep. this case, King Poseidon. How about that? That That's is that one. is unbelievable. It's beautiful. And, and it's right here in our state. It's right here. Yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah, one of the houses is in Blue Earth, uh, not the one that you just saw. I'm this one in Blue Earth is converted funeral home. The other home that you did see is in St. Cloud. The owners paid a third of the asking price, so clearly. I, wouldn't you okay. love to meet the original owners, though, who obviously were into this kind of thing? Like, what y'all thinking? Wow. No. Wow. Just a little bit eccentric. Possible. It's okay. possible. Oh, and I, I read that house in St. Cloud originally tried to sell for a mill or more, was on the market for so <laughs> long, yes. but then this gal, like she said, offered them like a third a of the price, more, yeah. and they were like, okay. sure, <laughs> sure, why not? The Blue Earth House? Yes. Okay, also read about this. Like we said, this house, they bought a former funeral home. <laughs> the husband or the wife, I can't remember which, said to the other one, okay, but that embalming room has to go. Ooh. Well, and that that scent doesn't go away from what I've heard. What? Yeah. Oh, Tom. <laughs> oh my you can spray as much renews it in there oh, as you want. Oh, gosh. You're oh, not Hey, if you're interested, Uncle Harry, <laughs> show is HGTV tonight and runs all week. Mm, that worst home gets a hundred fifty thousand dollar renovation from my favorite Windy City Rehab house in Victoria. One hundred fifty thousand. That's not going to get you far. In some I was going to say that doesn't seem like a ton of money. One hundred fifty. I mean, it is. It is, and it isn't when you're talking about a renovation for a house, especially like the Poseidon house, that looks right. huge. It looks massive. My favorite take though, is that out of the 12 houses in the country, yes, two, two, two. Are right here in our home we state. That's right. We're the winners. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hey, next in the dish, Lifetime is moving away from the holiday season and getting viewers ready for its next feature starring Janet Jackson. Ms. The two part Jackson, doc is Janet like we've never seen before. Here's a clip from the trailer. You've been very private about your personal life up until now. Why did you want to do this documentary? It's just something that needs to be done. Who is Janet Jackson? Oh, Janet Jackson's many, many women. She's an empowered woman. She's a legend. She's a blueprint. She is a warrior. The greatest show woman. She's literally done it all. She is a lot of the image that is out today. Janet is very private. For her to want to open up, I'm flabbergasted. This is where it started. Your father had a vision to get us out of Gary. He gave up his fatherhood to get them in the business. The Jackson Five. There were times when I just didn't understand where I actually fit in. Well, you saw yeah. them, Missy Elliott, Whoopi, Mariah, and Sierra all making appearances. Janet talks about her family life, personal life, and Justin Timberlake. The two-part doc hits Lifetime at the end of the month. It looks really good. Like well, a lot of family footage. I right. love that. And she was, she was the, you know, she was the girl. It was all the Jackson boys and then Janet. Mm -hmm. And she, she had that little sass thing going on. She was great. Uh, and I, I've told you the story before. We saw her when she did the Velvet Rope Tour yeah. in Rochester, New York, 
and she was incredible. She that was you know Rhythm That's Nation. Amazing. It was just fant. That that album still stands up today. Rhythm Nation still yeah. one of the best albums ever produced. Absolutely fantastic. Really cool. Jimmy Jam, Terry Lewis. Hello. Really? Hello. Oh yeah, no, I knew that. I knew that. I knew that. I knew that. Don't send me an email. I knew that. Okay. Before I say anything else, we're gonna go to break. We'll be right back. We got a lot more. Stay tuned. Let's make it a good day. We do it our own way. Let's make it a good day. Oh, no matter what they say. Oh, yeah, yeah. Makes me hungry for yams every time. Every time. I do, do you love the yams, though? I mean, of course, like it's the yam food house. or the the band. Both. I, I mean, I don't remember the last time I had a yam. Not even at Thanksgiving. I don't think so. Oh. Are those things you put the marshmallow yeah, on? Yeah, of course. Oh yeah, I totally had yeah, that. Yeah, there you go. I See? had one of those. You know you love it. It's just fine. Yeah. It's fine. Yeah. We were, by the way, talking about Rhythm Nation mm -hmm. during the break. Yes. The song I and I feel like people of my Come generation is all for you. Yeah. That came out in 2001, 2002. I think the, see that oh, that was yeah. the actual Velvet Rope tour, I believe. Oh, I could be so wrong. Good. Historians back me up on this one. I'm not sure. Jace, call me. Mm -hmm. Let us know. Our number one fan. But that um, was a really good tour. Usher opened up for her on the Velvet Rope tour. Usher really? was the opening act. The young, opening act? Young little Usher, no one even knew who he was. Oh. And I'm going, this guy could go places. Blair, mark my words, he could be good. He's the guy. Just mm -hmm. saying, this Usher guy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, well, welcome back to the big program. <laughs> I, I'm filling in. I, I'm Tommy. Tommy B. You can just call me that. Uh, filling in. That's what they, my friends call me. Uh, for Jason today, who's on vacation. He's having a blast. We, we checked in with him a little bit ago. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I mean, he's getting tan, which is so hard for him. Hey, don't forget to watch. You can watch highlights and full episodes of this show for free on YouTube. We poach each day's episode along with clips of the show shortly after we air live. Just search Jason Show. And please click that subscribe button. Very good. Mm -hmm. uh, the new year means uh, new TV shows to watch thanks to a uh, winter TV season. And one show is bringing new drama to Monday nights. The Cleaning Lady is about a woman who witnesses a murder and gets caught up working with the wrong crowd. Take a look. You have a great attention to detail. I take pride in my work. I want you on call. Everybody's got a dark side. You and I are both in a country that's not our own. Deep down in their blood. It's not about doing things the right way or the wrong way. Everybody's got a price. Any way you can. When they're on the wrong side, are they gone? Why do you want me to work for you? Because I don't want to have to kill you. The new show premieres tonight on Fox. Joining us now are the stars of The Cleaning Lady, Elodie Young and Oliver Hudson. Good morning Good to morning. both of you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Okay, one, that show looks very intense. Yeah, but two, uh, looking at this, Elodie, I want to start with you. This really centers around this relationship this mother has with her son and how she's willing to give up everything to help him, including doing some things that I guess you could look at and go, really, That's is that an excuse? Um, tell us a little bit about that relationship. Um, well, to me, it, I don't think there's, a, there's an excuse or I don't think she wanted, she, I, I don't even think it's helping her son. She's, it's saving her son. She's her blood and she would do anything to keep him alive because you know, it, she, he's the love of her life. And I can totally relate to that. Um, so I think uh, this is really the question that this show is, uh, is asking, like how far would you go to save your, you know, a member of your family, your son, your daughter, whoever you love the most. And that's, um, that's, that's very, that's very um, intense what Tony has to go through. Uh, really dark at times um but uh, it, it is this the story of this woman who's resilient and would give up anything for her son right it's a, even her own freedom well exactly and you know? as a doctor from cambodia this is kind of the, the backstory mm -hmm. here coming to the u.s undocumented worker yes. you witness this crime this murder <laughs> and then to stay alive you have to become the cleaning lady 
I mean, it's it's like a Breaking Bad kind of vibe I got from watching the the clip here. Uh, how would you how would you explain this, Oliver? As as if, uh, it, it looks as Kendall said, very intense. And th this is not, this is not your feel good kind of show, but it's just one that will draw you in. It looks like. Yeah. You know, it's peppered with some sort of levity. I think you have to mm -hmm. when you're dealing with anything sort of this gritty mm -hmm. and with this subject matter. And I, and I use the word grit. It is. It has grit. And, and honestly, <clears throat> I applaud Fox for allowing us to be gritty. You know, oftentimes in network TV, it's watered down a little bit. But this has has some real stuff to it, you know. Um, but, yeah, I think that's why they brought me in. Uh, I am the FBI guy but I am not necessarily super intense. I have moments of intensity, mm -hmm. but there's a levity about me. You know, there is a sort of humor that I bring to the show, I guess, nothing in the sort of like, you know, I'm not doing stand up, but it's definitely, it, it is, there's some relief there. Um, it is intense and uh, I think rightfully so. I mean, you're dealing with real deal subject matter. And I think if you don't do that justice, then you're doing it a disservice. So. You know, it's uh, it's fun. It's a ride. It's definitely a ride. A lot of cliffhangers. It sounds like a great storyline. It really mm -hmm. does. Yeah, it does. Absolutely. Uh, well, we really yeah. enjoyed watching the trailer and getting to speak with you two today. So thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate it. All the best. I mean, it looks great. It looks thank like, you for looks like a hit. Thank you guys. It looks like a hit. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. The Cleaning Lady premieres tonight at 8 o'clock right here on Fox. And as, as Oliver said, this is not your typical kind of Fox drama. No, so it, it looks really good. Again, Check kind of out. a Breaking Bad vibe. I got a little bit of that from For it. sure. So yeah. good. Mm -hmm. Looks good. I think we'll be setting the DVR because that's bedtime for me. Uh, stay right there. <laughs> and, for, and for you. And for me. <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs> St. Olaf's most famous OBMAG. What's that? Obstetrician magician. <laughs> the amazing Shapiro. He delivered Bridget. But it was so confusing. I mean, it's a girl. Now it's a dove. <laughs> now it's a glass of milk. I don't know how he got her in that deck of cards. <laughs> But there she was, right after the King of Hearts. Is this your baby? <laughs> classic Betty White. And a classic moment from the Golden Girls featuring the late, great Betty White. Of course, never breaking character, right? I mean, and all the other actresses, too. They were fantastic. Just so good. Welcome back. We, uh, we talked about Betty White's death at the age of 99. She was so close to 100 earlier in the show. Now we want to look back at some of her most iconic roles, starting with one of the most people, the one that people know her the most for. We just saw that there, Rose in The Golden Girls. I think she's a girl karma knocking. <laughs> well, what exactly does that mean? Literally, it's the precise moment when Dog Dude turns white. <laughs> It refers to the kind of person you don't want to share your hooden coggles with. <laughs> Rose, if you say one more of those stupid words, oh, so help it out, you tubin burbles. <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> That's very Minnesota right there, isn't I'm it? I'm like, I don't know what oh any of that means. Oh, White earned seven Emmy nominations so for lead actress winning once. Um, <laughs> That's awesome. Like you said, though, just the never breaking character. Well, exactly. Never... And don't you think that the writers, she's from St. Olaf, right? That's right. where she's supposed to be from. That's part of their, like, oh, we'll just Minnesota it up because we don't, you know, we don't, we try not to swear to other people. And we don't get out much. Gosh, darn so we it. make up words sometimes. That's right. It's fun. So good. The entire show, by the way, is available on Hulu with episodes also airing on Hallmark and other cable channels if you want to watch. So good. Mm -hmm. So good. Uh, next up, a show near and dear to Minnesotans, The Mary Tyler Moore Show. White, of course, played the happy homemaker, Sue Ann Nivens, who hosted a TV show on the WJM Channel 12. Isn't it simple? 
perfectly beautiful out there. Mm. I mean, snow always inspires such awe in me. Just consider one single snowflake alone. So delicate, so fragile, so ethereal. And yet, let a billion of them come together through the majestic force of nature. They can screw up a whole city. <laughs> Right? It's just perfect. It's just so good. Yep. Besides acting, uh, White was a game show staple, uh, filling in on a number of the, the popular game shows back in the day. Here's a clip when she was on Super Password with Lucille Ball, Carol Channing in the 80s. Um, uh, 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 mm. Okay. Dick? You don't buzz a legend. <laughs> Who said it? Uh, full fast on the buzzer. Absolutely right. <laughs> oh my goodness, that is so good. White's husband, he was on the show before Bert Combe there. You're seeing Alan Ludden was a longtime game show host who died in 1981. But they, uh, they were very, uh, they had a very close relationship, Hollywood marriage that mm -hmm. stood the test of time kind of deal. And, and uh, you could tell they both were, there was a very mutual kind of affection they had for each other. That's really yeah, cool. Yeah, it's really cool. The Betty White 100th birth movie special is still happening. Is still happening. It will be released in select theaters for one day only on her birthday, or what would have been her birthday, right. January 17th. So close, Betty. Mm -hmm. Yep. And the, uh, what those clips were great to watch, too. I and know. Lucille Ball, my God. She must have been up there in years at that time, too. I know, right? Wow. We'll be right back wow. right after this. With Stephanie Hansen. Oh. Zoom, zoom, zoom. You go. I like that. A little Oprah-ish. Thank Very you. Very nice. I try. Very nice. Uh, hey, new month, new year. Yep. Some people are using January to refresh. A little bit. Uh, it, there's something called dry January. Never met her. Me neither. Uh, it's a growing trend <laughs> when people ignore alcohol for a month, hence the dry part of January. But giving up booze doesn't mean you give up cocktails necessarily. You could always go virgin. Uh, joining us now with some ideas for dry January cocktails, our foodie expert, Stephanie Hansen. And Stephanie, Happy New Year. Happy New Year, you guys. Yeah. Back at home in my home kitchen. Very good. And uh, there's a lot of uh, people doing dry January. And I had coronavirus for the holidays, so oh, I decided no. that to help myself like launch into the new year yeah. with good immune system that right. I was going to try it too. You had a little time on your hands, as they say. Are you feeling better? I did. <laughs> I <laughs> am. Okay. Yes. Good. I good. out good. of quarantine yesterday oh, and it was a very mild cold basically, good but year. yeah. And I was like, okay, so I don't want any long-term like health ramifications. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to cut out the alcohol. I'm going to do whole 30. I'm going to really reset my system for the month of January. So I am going for it. Yeah. Okay. Going well, this, in. That's the good impetus. I mean, you didn't want that to happen, certainly. But at, if that's your jumping off point, mm -hmm. then there you go. Take the leap. So let's. Yeah. And it's, it's funny. A lot of people doing dry January. There's a, our local newspaper, the Star Tribune started a Facebook group and I have joined it. And it's really funny. Some people just want to cut back. Other people feel like they've been using alcohol as a crutch during super stressful times. Mm -hmm. Some people are just doing it for weight loss, or there's a lot of reasons why people are doing dry January. So I thought I'd give it a try. And sure. there's so many products now to make it easy. Yeah, right. And I, that's the I think that's the key thing. And you've got a list of different options for everybody. So your first one, I love a Moscow mule. Sure. This oh, is yeah. a green tea Moscow mule. Huh. Yeah, so in the second segment, I'm going to make some of these cocktails for you, but I'm going to be using all of these Minnesota products. Hey, so Stephanie Hansen, first... before you get into this, yes. I just, I have some bad news. We only have one segment. <laughs> oh, darn it. Okay. <laughs> so, so we're just going to have to do the this. skinny version of this. <laughs> yes, I'm going to introduce you to the products, and then you can go on my website because I have all the recipes okay. there at stephaniehansen.com. Yep, fair enough. Okay, so... Muddle and Mint is a local company and they've got mixers that are pretty juice forward. So if you're someone that's looking for like a hibiscus sage flavor or a mint, they've got a Moscow mule that you make with this syrup 
and then you add a little ginger beer and it's super delicious. So that is uh, that drink. And then these are, if you're someone that's like, these are Sweet Haven tonics. And if you're someone that's not interested in a lot of sugar, because mm -hmm. a lot of people are cutting out sugar for January too, these are fantastic. They're super herb forward. So a ginger, lime, and peppercorn, a spiced cherry and orange, a lemon, basil, and lavender. It's kind of crazy, all the flavors that they have. I've got a recipe for a Paloma that's made with a, a ginger and pineapple that's and some, jalapeno that's and, super delicious. some turmeric. Yes, because turmeric is anti-inflammatory, right? Right. Okay, so Dave Perner from Soul Asylum's brother, Paul Perner, mm -hmm. has actually done something super cool. He has created a non-alcoholic beer that tastes delicious. Hmm. It's got uh, the IPA tastes just like your favorite IPAs. This is a citra lager. And a lot of non-alcoholic beers, they take the alcohol out. This one doesn't have any alcohol to begin with, and it really tastes like real beer. And I use it to make a michelada, which is just like a Bloody Mary with beer oh. that's non-alcoholic. So that's kind of a fun one for like game day or if you're having brunch. You called that a michelada? Yes. Michelada. I, hmm. I don't know why it's even called that, Kendall. <laughs> it's it's, it's like it's a Bloody Mary with yeah. beer, basically. Yeah. Bloody Mary with beer. Mm -hmm. Good. Yes. And um, then social mixers is a simple syrup. This one has a lemon rosemary. And again, there's a cocktail that we make with kombucha, trying to like add vinegar and acid and a little bit of sweet and also citrus is really important when you're developing a mocktail. Right, hmm. and then I, reading on my, my little cheat sheet here, an Earl Grey hot toddy, tell us about that. Yes, that one is, so if you want something a little hot or you want cider, this Earl Giles uh, cinnamon syrup is fantastic for that. So you'd make your Earl Grey tea, and mm -hmm. then instead of having whiskey, you'd yep. add this cinnamon syrup, oh. uh -huh. a cinnamon stick, a little bit of um, uh, allspice would be good in it too. And then last but not least, I'm just crazy about these mixed leaf syrups. These are a little bit juicier, again, juice forward. They have one that I love that is a coconut, and I mix it with coconut water, and Ooh. I make like a yeah. pina colada mocktail. Mm -hmm. So you guys, since we only have one segment today, I'm all set up for the se second segment. So I'm going to have my husband tape me. Yes. And I'm going to put it on stephaniesdish.com with the recipes. Perfect. So if you are trying Jar January and you need some ideas, you can find it all there. Perfect. Mm -hmm. We're going to get the two segments dug on it no matter what. We're oh. going to do it. We're going to make it happen. Yes. Stephanie, good stuff as always. Thanks for sharing, and we'll look for that. Uh, give us, if we want to see you doing this again, where do we go again? Stephaniesdish.com, and if you want to join the Facebook group, there's over 700 people that are on it. That's at the Star Tribune, and that's also linked on my page. Because sometimes you need a little support, right? Because yeah. dry January can seem kind of boring. You've got to mix it up. you got to, like, work at it just mm -hmm. a little bit. I like it. Yeah, I good like it, stuff. too. Really good stuff there. Well, thanks so much, Stephanie. Yes, thank and you, happy you guys. New Year. And yeah. Happy we're, New Year. Have glad, a great show. We're, we're glad you're feeling better, too. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. I am. Thank you. You bet. Like she said, all of this will be on her website, stephaniesdish.com. And, of course, we'll be posting this segment on our Facebook social pages. That is Jason Show TV. Give us a search. And I'm intrigued by the the, the, the uh, non-alcoholic beer she was talking about, kind of yeah. the more the craft beer type. The michelada she makes with that thing. The soul asylum brother, Mr. Perner. Hey. Very nice. Mm -hmm. Very nice. We'll be back after this. Time to Google the michelada. It's fun to say. <laughs> Michelada. Michelada. Hey, Michelada. Michelada. For a Michelada. Dad jokes. Dad jokes. Hey, it's time for the world's shortest segment. Mm hmm. Fired up, Ted. Uh -huh. it, was, it already happened. You blinked. Oh, I yeah. missed it. Okay. A new honor for the latest Spider Man movie. It's now the 10th highest grossing movie in history. In history. Spider Man No Way Home earned another 52 million buckaroos this weekend. It's now earned nearly $610 million in the U.S. and Canada, nearly $1.5 billion wow. worldwide. They're doing all right. That's Spider-Man. This is like the 50th installation of Spider-Man right here. Probably. Still making buku buckage. Stay right there. We've got buku fun in the last six minutes of the show.
back and just lamenting the loss last time. Yeah, it's time for the surprise goodbye, everybody. Mm, let's do that. Mm -hmm. Oh, hey, we have no clue what the producers oh, put in this segment right. until right now. Today, a combination that could make you sick. It's Oreos and mayonnaise. Mm -hmm. And ESPN analyst tried it out at Duke's Mayo Bowl game this weekend. Take no, a look. Yeah. Don't. Mike, you came up with ideas, unconventional foods that work with mayonnaise. We're, we're starting with what? Cream-filled cookies here. You first. Let's take a dip. It's a really interesting blend of flavors. Mike Golick liked it, the fellow analyst, not so much. I think I'm gonna be sick, that looks disgusting. <laughs> Don't try that at home. Mm -hmm. We'll be back tomorrow, guys. Thanks for joining Have us. Have a great day.